Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're here. Let's get right into this. We're going to paint a beautiful tomato and an avocado. We're going to use juicy, moist paint. We're going to have a good time here. So I have a uh, just a you know regular office pencil or school pencil, and um, I'm going to use a uh, Da Vinci um, Kalinsky round brush. This is a tra travel brush, which I like to use. These travel brushes are really nice. This is a number five. So we're going to do a smaller composition here. The main thing I want to focus in on is really getting that fresh, juicy paint onto the paper. Let's make sure we're really not getting uh, sidetracked on using like a you know a watercolor palette that's got dry paint in it, and we're trying to scrub around on that, and we're not getting the results we want. So here. Um, You'll notice on my channel if you follow me on a regular basis, and if not, please uh, subscribe. If, you, if you're here for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Just smack the subscribe button, hit the notification bell right next to it. This way you'll, you'll get my notification of when my new video comes out. I'm always making new videos every week, so once a week at least I'm making a new video. And uh, I'm glad that you'll uh, be watching it, and together we're going to learn a lot of great things about watercolor and get better at our paintings and we'll be happier. If we're, if we're making and creating better paintings, we're going to be happier as watercolor artists. And that's always my goal. I'm always trying to get better, learn more, read more books, watch more YouTube videos, uh, you know, always on the uh, hunt for more information. Information is really the key here. Information's power. So let's get right into it here. So we have our watercolor brush ready to go. We have our pencil. And we're just going to do, a, uh, let's do a simple, we'll do a tomato first. So let's start out, we'll do a nice tomato. We have the garden here at my house. I have a garden and uh, grow tomatoes in the springtime and summertime. Now is harvest time, we're harvesting our tomatoes. So we're going to have the light coming from here. From this side we'll make a little light spot there and we'll make a little okay so we have a little light spot there the lights coming from here so we'll make a little spot of light maybe just leave that white paper and we have our tomato shadow we're all set so that's a simple tomato shape. Now the thing I wanted to kind of really impress here is let's let's think about this real carefully. To make a really beautiful tomato we're going to need r rich, vibrant, exciting color. Um, we don't want to have a situation where, where this happens and I'll let me find my palette that sits out and does not have fresh paint in it. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, so now this is my palette with dried paint where I haven't um, squeezed fresh paint into it. There's there's two ways, there's probably many ways, but there's basically two ways I know of that are really obvious of how to keep your palette with fr fresh moist paints in it. And I always have fresh squeezed juicy paints in my, in my palette all the time. Now this palette here has been sitting in my st studio for maybe like, you know, three, four weeks or even a month. And it's just out in the air and it's all the paints are dry. So now if we look at this and say, how is this going to look if we use dried paints? So if we add some water to our brush and we put some, okay, we get some of that. That's, you know, a very light wash, but we really can't get anything really dark and, and vibrant with that. Okay, let's try another color. Let's use uh, Lizard and Crimson. Same thing. 
dried paints will only get you this kind of look if you don't have fresh juicy paints in your palette. So this limits your the look of your watercolor if you're only using dried paints and you're not using fresh juicy paints like my main palette that I use all, all the time. So you can see how that looks faded and kind of dull and uh, you know this type of wash is good when you're using or when you're doing light washes but usually when you're doing watercolors you're always going to need darks too these are this is very light so we need darks in our paintings dark tonal values because that's what's in real life if we look at a real tomato we're not going to see this kind of a red if we look at a, a tomato that's just been if we're, we go into our garden and we grab a tomato and we look at it we say that, that doesn't look like a, a, the color of a tomato at all it's too light. So how are we going to get that beautiful tomato? The color, the beautiful, exciting, vibrant color. We have to have fresh, ju juicy paints. So these dried palettes where there's no fresh, juicy paint, we're not going to get a good result with our paintings. So let's uh, make sure we have fresh, juicy paint in there. If you have to squeeze it, so the, the two ways you can do it are one, each time you go to paint, you squeeze in fresh paint with your tubes. Just a simple quick, I keep, I keep two plastic bags with my paints. Cool colors, blues, purples, greens. That's my one bag of tube paint. Then I have my warm colors and the other Ziploc bag. And that's the, you know, yellows, reds, browns, umbers. So I keep my colors warm and cool in two different bags. And then, so if you want to, you can keep your paints organized. And then each time you go to paint, you can squeeze a little bit of paint in your palette on each of your colors you're going to use. And that'll work. You, you'll always have your fresh, juicy paint as you paint. But if you paint quite often, maybe once every day or once every couple days, that gets to be a little much, always opening up and closing your paint tubes. So that's why I suggest using maybe a piece of small paper towel that you moisten, you put in your palette, you close up your palette, you put it in a plastic bag, and then you set it in the refrigerator or in a cool place or by a cool window in the wintertime. In the summertime, if it's really hot, maybe inside the refrigerator. That's what I do. So that's just a little tidbit of information of how I keep my palette and my paints moist. I also have another channel uh, on YouTube called watercolor in five if you go to watercolor in five and you just tap in a uh, palette you'll see I have like three or four palette videos and that describes how exactly how I keep my paints nice and moist so if you just type in watercolor in five and type in the word palette you'll find some really cool uh, videos on that so I'm hoping you'll check that out and uh, that's a great resource for you to uh, check out the way I uh, set up my palettes, the colors I use. I also have the um, how how to keep your palettes with your paints fresh and moist. That is, so that's what you need for your paintings to have that. And um, also too, if you're just new here and you haven't ever subscribed, please uh, consider subscribing on my channel here. Just hit the subscribe button down below. And this way you'll, you'll get my new videos every week. We're making videos every week here, the whole enchilada every week. We do landscapes, seascapes, we do tutorials like this with techniques, methods, process. Also we do boats, flowers, figure painting, we do it all. So just to let you know, if you subscribe, you'll be getting interesting content every week, once a week at least, sometimes twice a week. All right, let's get right back into it here. So we're saying here we want to make sure we have fresh, fresh paint. Moist paint in our palette, that's the first thing. And then the second thing we want to make sure is our brush. We're, we're using a round brush here, a natural hair brush. You want to, let's, let's make sure we're controlling how much water is in the, in the hairs of the brush when we're painting, because that's a really critical thing. You'll notice if you really keep a very keen awareness of how much water is in your brush, in the actual hairs of your brush, your paintings are, are going to go much better. Trust me, they're going to go much better, and I'm going to explain how it is that that happens right here, right now. All right, so 
Um, if you want a nice, rich, vibrant color with your watercolors, let's say for this tomato, you're going to want to take your brush, rinse, get some water on there, and then you're going to do a thing we call checking the water off. You want to check some of that water off, you can do it in many ways. One, you can tap it on the side of your water container to take some of the water off, or you can go over to your sm small piece of sponge, tap on the sponge to take some of the water off the hairs of the brush, or you can tap on a small piece of paper towel we have here, so you can keep some paper towels by your palette, tap off some water on there, rinse off your brush. You can also, if you want, you could take check some water off on a small piece of tissue. You might hold a piece of tissue and tap on that to take a little bit of water off the, the brush. Or I always wear an apron most times when I paint. So if you have an apron on, you take your apron, you rinse your brush off, and then you tap it on your apron to take a little bit of water off. So it's always best to take a little water off your brush once you rinse it. Because you're constantly going back and forth to your water container to rinse your brush off. So once you rinse your brush off, you either go to your sponge, your paper towel, your apron, or you have a, a paper tissue, a little bit, of, and that's it. Now you have a damp brush and not a brush that has water all flowing out of it, which is going to interfere with you getting some really good color on here. So let's go in. We'll get some, um, we'll mix, we'll get some uh, cadmium red. We'll use some cadmium red here. See that rich, exciting color, right? Look at that. Perfect. Maybe uh, we rinse off the brush, tap on the sponge, take off some of the water, not all of it, some of it, some alizarin crimson. And there we have a little bit of a darker red. Well, let's do it again. Rinse, check off some water on the paper towel. Maybe we'll go in and get some cobalt blue. Maybe a little bit of purple. Perfect. Rinse the brush off. Tap a little bit of water off on the tissue. And we'll go and we'll get some yellow, yellow ochre for the shadow area. A little bit of shadow area, a little bit of yellow ochre. Rinse the brush off. Check a little water off on the sponge. Maybe a little bit of purple. Maybe we'll mix that out a little bit on the paper. There we go. A little shadow. Perfect. Now, rinse off the brush, check a little bit of water off, and now we're going to start we're not going to go into the paints. We're just going to rinse the brush off, check some water off so that it's just the damp, damp brush. And then we'll just start to, same thing, rinse the brush off, check the water off. And we're just going to get that lighter color over here. See how that's that lighter tonal value? Look at that. Then maybe we go with an, a little more purple. Rinse off the brush, check off the water. Purple. A little bit of a shadow in there by the stem. Rinse off the brush, check lots of water off. Almost all of the water, take that off the brush. And we just smooth this over so we have a little bit of that highlight there on the on the uh, tomato. Look at that, beautiful. So now we've done a beautiful, a gorgeous tomato. Look at the vibrant color on that. So that's exciting. We're going to come back. We're going to do a uh, avocado. Before we do the avocado, though, let's just quick do a stem, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. 
and let's just do a little stem. Now here, with the stem, uh, a little bit of just, there we go. Perfect, look at that. Okay, so you saw how I controlled the water in my brush, making sure I've got plenty of fresh, juicy, moist paint for this tomato from our garden. We just picked our tomatoes today from the garden outside. It's harvest time in New Jersey. Beautiful. We have beautiful gardens here in New Jersey in the United States, and we're picking our tomatoes now. So you can see how we accomplished getting these fresh, moist, juicy colors onto the watercolor paper, and that's how your paintings are going to look. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll do an avocado. We'll go through the same process again so we really have it locked in how to get these really juicy, beautiful, exciting colors in our, on our watercolor paintings, okay? All right, let's, we'll come right back. Okay, so we just took a quick break. Take breaks when you paint. I always say um, concentration kind of like uh, usually starts to um, fade around 15, 20 minutes um, at that point. Uh, for me, that, that's about where I find my concentration starts to uh, fade a little bit, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So I think every 20 minutes, if you take a small break for 5 or 10 minutes and then you come back, you're going to do much better. You're, you'll keep fo more focused on the... Um, your painting and what you want to accomplish and, and the uh, goals and tasks that you have set up as you paint. So here our goal and our task was to um, make sure we're concentrating on how much paint and water is in, the t is, in the, is in the brush hairs of our brush. This is a round Kalinsky sable brush. It's a travel brush by Da Vinci, pure Kalinsky. Uh, and it also works the same for if you're using a um, synthetic hairbrush or a mix of synthetic and natural hair. So if you're using a round brush, just remember that we want to control how much water is in the tip of that uh, of your brush hairs. We don't want too much water in there so that the water is flowing out everywhere and kind of um, making too many puddles of water on our p paper in our painting. Or we don't want to have it so that our brush is completely dry and there's no water in there. We want to have some dampness and water in our uh, brush hair. So that's the kind of the basics of this video is sort of getting that right, just the right amount of water and paint ratio in, in the brush as we're painting. And we did our first co uh, small composition here. We did a tomato, a nice beautiful New Jersey tomato. Tomatoes, we're actually picking them right now here in New Jersey. It's uh, harvest time. We're picking the tomatoes, the cherry tomatoes and the um, beef eaters tomatoes and all those great, beautiful, tasty um beautiful fruits, the um, tomatoes here, and we make pasta sauce with them and put them in salads and all that great stuff. So I'm sure many of you have gardens and you have a fun time gardening. Um, so, uh, okay, so now we're going to go, we're going to do uh, an avocado next here. So we'll do an avocado right here next to the uh, tomato. And um, we'll, all right, we're going to change our water. Let's change our water often so that we have fresh, clean water. And again, we just said that we have numerous ways we can dry off our brush. We can use the edge of our brush, uh, our water container. You can kind of uh, flick the brush hairs on the water container to take some water off. Uh, you can also, when you rinse your brush, you can take some water, check some water off on a, a sponge, a small piece of sponge. You can do the same on a piece, piece of paper towel. Also a... Um, tissue if you want. If you can hold a tissue while you're painting and you tap some water off on that. I always wear an apron when I paint. This way I um, can check water off on that really quickly. So um, many ways to control the water in your brush hairs of your brush. All right so we did that here. Now we'll just splash a little bit of water in there. We'll get some paper towels. We'll just uh, we'll just we'll clean up our palette a little bit. We'll just take some of the paint that we've used before and just 
keeping the palette clean is a great idea. This way you don't get too much muddiness in the paint colors. Sometimes you might want to have some nice uh, muddy colors so you can leave your paints and you don't have to worry about cleaning up your palette. But for this kind of painting here, we're getting really fresh, vibrant, high intensity colors. We want to keep the palette clean. Okay, now we are going to draw in our... So we'll draw in a nice avocado here. And a shadow, so we'll draw our avocado in a shadow, like that. Looks good. Okay, now, again, we're gonna keep with that consistent idea of, we're not gonna be able to get a good color, intense, you know, high intensity color and a, and a proper tonal value that we're seeing when we're painting our subject matter. This happens to be still life, some fruits and vegetables and things. We're not going to be able to get that really good color if we're, um, if we're just scrubbing around on dry paint here. You can see these are dry paints that I have. So we see we can't really get good color with that, but if we have our fresh, juicy paints, we're going to be able to get those gorgeous colors we want, right? We want gorgeous, high-intensity colors in our, you know, in our paintings, and we want to make sure we're really accurately, you know, when we're looking at our subject matter, whether it's you know, um, still life, landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes, whatever subject matter you're painting, you want to be able to capture that proper tonal value of, of what we're seeing. So if you need a really dark dark, it's hard to get a dark dark. If our paints are dry, like this, see if I'm going into some palettes that are dry, you know, that's not really... Now if I pick up some fresh moist paint, see how dark that is? That's how we got, we have to have that. All right, so now let's, we'll get started here again. Same process, we rinse our brush off each time we go into the palette. We rush, rinse the brush off, check a little water off on our sponge, our paper towel, maybe we'll use a, a tissue, whatever you want to use out of all these. You can use, if you have an apron on, you can use your uh, apron like this, rinse the brush off, dry a little bit of water off on the apron. And then we go in and we get our color, green, yellow ochre, green, and uh, we'll also use some uh, cobalt blue. And that looks like that's going to be a really nice French ultramarine blue, a really good um, avocado color. All right, there we go. And you can see beautiful, intense color. Right around there. Now, let's get a little bit of cadmium lemon, or just a cadmium yellow is fine. Maybe a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow too. And then I'll pick up a little bit of that green. And that's where we rinse the brush off, take off lots of water, go over to our lighter color, and we'll leave a little bit of white here. So we're, we're going to leave a little bit of lights here. And then I just mix the color on there. Maybe a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue. Straight right into the tube paint. Then let's go with some uh, 
yellow ochre, cobalt blue, shadow color. Rinse off the brush. Maybe a little bit of purple. There we go. A little bit of splashing. And then we have an avocado. A nice shadow. And again, we got that juicy, vibrant, high intensity color by Rinsing the brush, checking off quite a bit of water, and going straight in and getting our... You can see all that fresh paint on the tip of the brush there. And the same thing, we rinsed off the brush checked off a lot of water on maybe the paper towel this time here then we go in and get some blue straight french ultramarine blue a little bit of darker darks there for the shadow color underneath and there you have it so this is a guaranteed way that you can get beautiful vibrant rich color into your watercolors this just happens to be a tomato and an avocado. This could be uh, landscape paintings. It could be trees, um, grasses, um, any kind of uh, flowers. If you're doing a landscape or even like a seascape, you'd want to have some really beautiful, dark, uh, rich, dark colors in the, in the ocean, some blues and greens in the ocean colors. Then some really light colors in the uh, ocean, maybe some light blues. The thing is, controlling the lights and the darks in your painting is really critical. And that's all you have to do is just remember it's the, it's the controlling the water in your brush. If you want a really, really exciting, dark, you know, straight, beautiful, intensity color, you have to, um, the, the main thing is to get the water, rinse and get the water and check that off on either a paper towel, a sponge, a tissue, an apron on your, if you're wearing an apron, get that brush a little bit dry, then go in and grab that paint, pick up that paint, that fresh juicy paint like that, just like that. You want to pick up lots of that goopy paint and get that onto the watercolor paper and that's going to give you those real intense colors that you want and you'll be excited you'll have gorgeous paintings and all it is is just really again keeping an eye on that water how much water is in your brush hairs and uh, so try this out have fun with it practice it do a tomato do an avocado that's simple right a couple simple items like this then maybe try it out in your favorite subject matter that you have you might like to do flowers try it out in your flower paintings the same concept uh, using your um, fresh juicy paints moist paints freshly uh, you know tube paint squeezed right out of the tube and I have also another um, location on YouTube it's called watercolor and five uh, consider going there, Watercolor and 5. If you type in Watercolor and 5 in YouTube and then click uh, also type in palette, my palette or Chris Petrie's palette, you'll find that uh, I have about another five or six videos on this channel, Watercolor and 5. That's going to show you how I keep all my palette uh, colors fresh and ju juicy and moist. I go into, you know, how to store it. I put it in a plastic bag. I explain the whole method method to how to keep your paints ni you know, nice and, and juicy like this. So you don't have to keep squeezing fresh paint all the time when you're doing your watercolors because that can be a real pain in the neck. I know myself when I first started and I learned that I had to keep my paints like this fresh and moist, I said to myself, I, I can't be bothered every day 
if I want to paint, I got to take the tubes of paint out and squeeze all the tubes into my palette. Didn't make sense to me. So that's why I learned how to, again, use the methods that I have. If you go to Watercolor in 5, again, that's my uh, second channel, Watercolor in 5. And if you type in Palette Watercolor in 5, you'll find my other videos on palettes. And I also have uh, palette videos, too, also on this channel, on uh, my main channel, Chris Petri. Uh, watercolors here on this uh, YouTube channel. All right, so everybody, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Enjoy. I make videos every week and we do all kinds of subject matter. Most times we're doing paintings. We're doing full paintings, the whole enchilada, seascapes, ocean, flowers. You know, we do um, cityscapes, buildings, we do people, we do figures, we do everything basically, but we do full paintings every week. This week I decided just to take a step back and cover the real exciting part of how to keep that brush with just the amount of perfect amount of water in there, perfect amount of paint, so you can get all your tonal values, your lights, your darks, your rich colors, and you'll be happy. You'll be creating better paintings all the time. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Have a great uh, evening, morning, afternoon, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.